step-by-step -step tutorial on what you're going to need and how you're going to do it. Now let's get that paper soaking. Hey ladies and gents, we're back and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a mural which is essentially like wallpaper by Station D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial on what you're going to need and how you're going to do it. So let's start off with our materials. This particular wallpaper is pre-pasted. So when it's pre-pasted, what that means is you're not applying your own adhesive, it's got adhesive on it already. But that adhesive needs to be activated and it's activated by water. So there's a couple ways you can do this. The easiest one is to just get one of these trays from the store. They've got a little pole in the middle of it, which helps because as you roll the wallpaper and you sit it in the water, as you're pulling up, that pole keeps the roll in the water and pulls some of the water off as you're pulling it up. So that helps keeping things a little bit cleaner. So we've also got, uh, this is called a sponge smoother. So this is um, for delicate wallpapers. This is a great way to smooth the paper against the wall and make sure that you've got good adherence and um, minimal air bubbles. So when you're working with delicate wallpaper, you're better off using something that's got uh, a felt on the back as opposed to even something that's just a, a plastic because that could scratch or um, take some of the ink off of the paper. So we've got one of those. Uh, we've also got a uh, sponge because this inevitably gets pretty messy and once you put the next piece on, it's good to wipe the seams down. Sponge is super handy, you'll find whenever you're doing any wallpaper. This is a good tool to have on hand. The other thing is make sure that you have knife and extra blades. This is something that not everyone thinks about, but after a few cuts, this blade is going to get really, really dull. And the worst thing that can happen is trying to cut wallpaper with a dull knife. If when you're going to cut or trim your top, bottom, or side. If it's a dull knife, it'll tear the paper. So make sure that you're constantly snapping off new sections of the blade or switch out part of your blade as often as you can. And then just some basic paper towel to clean up spills because wallpapering is a messy job, so you will get uh, you'll get globs of adhesive or water on things. So it's good to have some stuff to clean it up with. Now the other thing that they'll ask you for is a level and a pencil. And that's a, a great system. Uh, essentially all you're trying to do is keep your sheets level and a good way to do that is to measure out, so grab a, a tape measure and just measure the width of your sheet and then at about that width or maybe a little bit wider, you're going to make pencil lines and then draw a nice level line so you have something to base your level sheets off of. But we're going to do something a little more clever. We're going to use a laser level. Now, the good thing about this is when you're using the pencil and level technique, what you'll find is sometimes your sheet will cover that line and once that line's gone, you don't have a reference point. The cool thing about using a laser is that line is always there. So each sheet, we can basically reset the laser to the width of the next sheet so we have a level line each and every time, which makes sure that your mural is perfectly level, which is a big part of getting a clean job. So we've got our level, we've got all our tools. Let's get wallpapering. You're also definitely gonna want one of these. Every time you cut a piece off, you're gonna have a wet, soggy, gluey piece of paper. It's really nice to have a bin to throw that in right away. So this is a little bit different than most wallpaper. Uh, you'll find that all wallpaper is slightly different. So step one, no matter what, you'll always be read the instructions and follow those as closely as possible. But this particular paper is, because it's a mural and it doesn't have a repeat, it's got designated sheets. So it's numbered from one, two, three, four, five, and you have to do left to right with this particular paper. So this might not apply to all wallpaper jobs, but for this specific one, we're gonna show you how to do the Station D pre-basted wallpaper. Pretty neat. Oh, cool. So here you can see that they've numbered and labeled each piece just so that you don't screw it up. So when you're starting your wallpaper job, it's always recommended that if you're doing a full wall, you should start in the corner. And a lot of the instructions will tell you to make sure that you overlap that paper a little bit just to make sure that you have coverage. And I'm going to show you why that is. So as you can see, our line at the bottom is snug right in the corner there, but as we come up, you'll see that this wall veers away and we're actually, let's call it roughly about a half an inch off of square at the top. So what that means for us is that we have to make sure that our paper wraps around at least half an inch so that we have coverage in the whole wall. Because if we started snug down here and we ran our paper level, it would be perfect up here. But when we get to the top, you'll see there's a sliver of wall that shows. So to cover that up, what we'll do is we'll make sure that we give a half inch at least of overlap on this paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by tucking it in at the top and then running it down so that when that's level, we're going to have about half an inch overhang here. We'll cut that off and it'll be perfect. This paper recommends that we start from left to right. And because this paper actually is designed to overlap, each sheet overlaps a quarter inch, they want us to start from the left side and go to the right. 
In this room, you can see that's not exactly ideal because we have this doorway directly in our way right off the bat. It's not ideal to start with little sheets, but that's what the paper calls for, so that's what we'll do. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out the width of one sheet. I'll make a small mark in pencil, and then I'm going to set up my level line so that I know that I'm hanging that sheet nice and plump. So if I go from this corner, and I know my sheet is 21 and a quarter inches long, so I'm going to make a little mark at 21 and a quarter, and then I'm going to make sure that my level line lines up with that mark. So if I put my piece right up in this corner, like we discussed earlier, I know that the end of it is going to be right here, and I'm going to use this line to make sure that I'm hanging it nice and plump. Okay, so another uh, unique thing that this paper calls for is they want the wall to be moist before you adhere the paper to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get the sponge a little bit damp, and then just make sure that the wall in my first sheet has a little bit of moisture on it. Okay, now let's get that paper soaking. So the next thing it calls for is starting at the bottom, to roll the paper with the image facing inside so that the glue is on the outside. Just loosely roll that, and then I'm going to soak it in the water for 15 seconds. So just remember that before you put this in, it's a pretty, 15 seconds goes pretty quickly, so just be sure that you're ready to stick this to the wall before you dip that in the water, because the clock starts ticking as soon as it goes in. Okay, so we've got all our stuff, got my knife, my smoother, I'm going to dip that in, the clock will start, and then I'm going to stick it on the wall, let will see. See how she goes. So, paper goes in. We're gonna count to 15. So just pull it out nice and slow so that you make sure that every piece of the paper has come in contact with the water. And then the other thing you want to think about is just making sure that you give yourself enough coverage on the top and on the bottom so that you're not left with a bare strip of wall. So most wallpaper doesn't come pre-cut. We know that this the exact dimensions of this mural fit this wall with about let's call it an inch on the top and the bottom. So we know roughly how much coverage we need overlapping the ceiling, or in our case, the crown and the baseboard. So I'm gonna get a rough placement here, and then I'm gonna come and check my level line, which I'm sort of standing in the way of. So if you look here, you can see that when I'm snug into the corner, my line actually wants to move about an eighth to the right. So I'm gonna adjust that. Okay, now I'm ready to just get a general idea of where I want it. You can, you do have a little bit of time to play around with it. But because this door is in the way, I'm going to have to make a few cuts before I lock anything in too firmly. So, because I know from my measurement that I'm going to have about a half an inch overhang here, I can give myself a rough idea of where that's going to be. And then I'm going to make my relief cut where this casing is before I really try to fine tune anything. I guess it's also important to remember that this piece is going to set the center of that mural. So if I want those roses to be a little bit higher, start now because once this piece is in, we're locked in. Also, give yourself enough room, enough coverage in case the wall grows as you go along that you're not leaving yourself too short. So I'm going to move that a little bit higher. So I've given myself a little more overhang just to make sure that if the ceiling grows over there that I'm not left with a gap at the top. So I like that placement a bit better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a relief cut where this casing is. If, if you just come at this and you assume like, if I can feel, I know that this is the top of the casing. Your brain tells you just to run your knife straight along there, but you're gonna run into a problem if you do it that way, because you don't know what square is yet, because this paper is just loosely tacked to the wall. The first thing you wanna do is find the edge. So there's, there's the vertical line and there's my horizontal line. So I know my point is right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna mark there, and I'm gonna start my relief cut with enough room and then just come on a nice diagonal here. And now I'll have enough movement in the paper to place it where I need to. So again, start from the corner. I'll check my level line in a second, but you'll see that now that I have slight relief in that paper, it'll allow me to start placing it a little more accurately. But keep in mind, because we started shy of that corner, that you will have to open it up a bit. And it's always better to cut less in the beginning to go back and, and cut more, because you can, you can always cut more with wallpaper, sometimes you can get away with pacing it up again, but you're always better to start with less. Now, this piece is gonna hang, it's no longer, the tension alone is no longer gonna get me a relatively straight line, so now I have to be really careful where I lie this. And be careful again, this is now, the weight of this can tear the paper, so just make sure that you hold the weight of the paper and don't let it hang, because it's now compromised. So I'm gonna give myself a rough idea here. And what I like to do is just gently tack that paper onto something, 
just so it's not the weight of that is not pulling the paper off. The important thing now is to come back and check with your plumb line. So because this is the only continuous part of this section, I'm going to make sure that this strip is nice and plumb. And I like where that's sitting. So this is going to be my start point. So now I'm going to smooth this section and work my way along. So I'm going to take some of this off. And getting rid of the excess will take some of the weight off of that sheet and make it easier to work with. So once you have an idea of what you're definitely not going to need, I find that cutting some sections off at a time makes your life a little bit easier. Okay, so you can see that I've got my top corner here cut. Always start with the cuts that allow you to lie the sheet flat. Leave the top, bottom, and sides until you've got that piece exactly where it's going to be. If you cut the top too early and then you realize later that you want to make some adjustments, that's a quick way to screw your job up really quickly. So leave those until you're absolutely sure the piece is not moving. But at this point for me, I'm just going to come down and just gently smooth this piece as I go down. And when I get to the baseboard, I'm going to need to make some more relief cuts. But you can see already that just like we planned, we're nice and snug up in the top. And when I've got to the bottom here, I've got that same half inch overlap that we were expecting. So we've got the top of the baseboard right there. That's where it meets the casing. So I'm going to go down about a quarter of an inch just to be safe, poke through, and make a nice diagonal relief cut. You do the same thing on the other side, just smoothing gently. Same thing. So there's my corner, down about a quarter inch. If you're nice and sharp, you should be able to poke right through. You'll find once the relief cuts are there, you're able to snug that paper up into the corners without tearing. I like where that's sitting. So I'm at a point now where I can start to think about making my big cuts. So this is sort of individualistic. If you prefer to use a nice long straight edge when you're making your cuts, then by all means do that. What I've found is that going with a long straight edge, you're not following the exact curvature of the wall, so you can get into problems if the wall bows out or if it dips in. I like to use a small guide. So I use these guys. These are plastic, so you do have to be careful that the knife doesn't dig into this. But what I like about this is it's got a little bit of thickness. So because I know that this is about an eighth thick, as I'm coming here, I can rely on that extra thickness to give me coverage here. And I've found that you end up with a, a much cleaner look if you play it safe, rather than using a nice thin travel and getting it right in the edge. It always looks better to have a little bit of extra paper in my experience. So that's why I like these guys. Let's start with the casing on this side. So I'm gonna give myself a new blade, just cause I've made a few cuts already on that score line and just carefully on the floor, just snap it. That section of the blade comes off and now I got a fresh one. Now what I like to do is just run my guide, make sure that I'm in the right position, but then once I have my piece, I'm going to lie my knife flat against my guide and just run that down with my guide. So the goal here should be to try to keep your knife in your cut as you slide your guide. That way you know you're not going to be stopping and starting and creating little lips and places that can peel off and tear. I'm going to start from the bottom now, I'm switch hands. Up, slide my guide, come up, slide my guide. At this point, I'm going to peel that off. And if I, that's the one benefit of doing a continuous cut. And on these corners, almost every time you'll find you have to go back and make a small slice again because it's really hard to cut that corner. Just try to avoid tearing. What I think be careful with here is with a sharp knife, just make sure you're not pulling that corner too tight. Now what I'm going to do here to make my life easier is I'm just going to go into my cut and I'm going to finish that on an angle there. Got my bottom cut, got my inside cut. Now I'm going to go down and start slicing where this is starting to overlap. We'll get that and I'll do my tops. Run it down. So this time, I'm just do little strips at a time. If you can slide it like I was just doing there, again, I like to make sure that I'm not leaving any chance, I want to make sure that I'm giving myself coverage. Um, if you slide it, you're, you're going to run into problems. So. And I'm going to switch directions. Okay, so just make sure that my bottom, like I said, that part is almost impossible to get. Just carefully go in and just finish that. Then Feel this, and that you'll find follows the exact profile of the wall. With a clean sponge, and just get that extra adhesive off. Just 
resting lightly. Squish the adhesive out from the corner. You just want to get the stuff that's globbed on there. You want to make sure that's not going to dry on the wall. Okay, so now I'm on top of the casing, same technique. If you find that you have to go back a few times, change your blade. That's generally a good sign that your blade is getting dull. It happens faster than you think. Last cut is going to be the top here, if you can. So again, same technique. Press nice and hard at the end. See if you can get that in one cut. If you can, it's always better. One, side, good. Get that. Get that adhesive off of there. There you go. There's our first piece. We got our plumb line here. All our edges are cut. Hugging the wall tightly. Just gonna make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Get the adhesive off, and uh, we're ready for piece number two. So in this scenario where I know that the piece is going to be really short, if we were doing regular wallpaper with a standard repeat, I wouldn't cut a sheet this big, but because these are pre-cut sheets, I know that I can figure out how much of this I need and then eliminate most of it. So I'm just going to hold it up, find my pattern match, and then give myself a few inches and cut off the bottom. So I know that if I cut the sheet right about here, I won't run into any problems and it'll be a lot easier to handle. Just make sure you're cutting relatively square. <laughs> now, I don't have the weight of this pulling on that piece. Bring it over. Now this time, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my image match first and then I'm gonna set my laser so that I know which part needs to be plumb. So I like my match here. So we're pretty close, but the top looks like it needs to come in. Bottom needs to come out. So, as long as I have a reference point. If you can see now, even though my plumb line here is in a bit on this piece of paper, I can use that as a reference to get my approximation of what plumb is. And then once I'm close there and the picture matches up, like it does there, smooth it out. It always helps to make sure you're not stuck to anything when you're smoothing the bottom and the top out because it will want to pull. Here, just keep in mind that you want to pick up where your last one left off. So just make sure your knife lines up with your last cut. And then begin. You should uh, same thing on the top. Slice. Come back and clean that off. A bucket of clean water. We've safely made it to the other side of the casing so we can breathe a sigh of relief. But now, more than ever, it's important to pay really close attention to this plumb line because I'm essentially starting a whole new line. I'm creating a new level line here. Before I make any cuts, I'm going to make sure that I'm bang on this plumb line. I'm going to smooth it up. I've got my relief cuts. Make sure I'm happy with that before I cut any more off. One final check. That plumb line of ours. Knife over guide. Cut. Slide. Really? Are you gonna follow me? general rule of thumb is to start from the center and smooth outward so that way you're not pulling it more to one side than the other to the, to, to the center Just. So there you have it. It's all done. The mural is fully complete. And we're pretty happy with how it turned out. There's a few interesting things about this mural that are a little bit different than standard wallpaper. Uh, one of those things is the quarter inch overlap that they call for on all the seams. 
Um, that's got its pros and cons. The pros being it's easier to install and you can ensure that when the paper dries, the seam doesn't split. What happens when you butt joint seams, when you set them in the adhesive, they look great, but after a couple days, sometimes the paper shrinks a bit and the seam grows. So at least this ensures that doesn't happen, but you can see the lip where the two, the two pieces overlap. And that's sort of a preference thing. If you like that, great. If not, maybe this stuff isn't for you, but it looks great. There's no denying that. You come over here, we've done a, a cool detail where we've wrapped the outlet covers of the, uh, I think that's Cat 4 and the, the plug outlet cover in the wallpaper itself to sort of give it a, uh, a unique look, keep it hidden but still easy to find. Okay, so there you have it guys, a full tutorial on how to hang wall coverings. Do us a favor, subscribe, like the video, and see more stuff like this.